there wouldn't have been so many claps if, if he would have taken my full name, which is Rajendra Zore, and <laughs> which is apparently a Raj Zo by then. All right, so I guess my clickbaity title have pulled a good set of audience today. And with almost empty room, I was quite nervous. As soon as the people started walking in, I kind of started getting some pumped up and confident, like, okay, I'll kill it. I don't know, <laughs> let's see. But before, before we could get started, I want to know my audience from this. It's not working, or it's okay. Just, just solopreneurs in the house. We all are, most of us. Anyone doing WordPress business, we all are, all right? I do that all the time. Even if I'm uh, running a multi-million dollar business today, I was once a solopreneur. That is how I started, and that is all I'm going to talk about. Uh, so, <clears throat> people are still joining, so. Okay, so today I'm going to cover some of the business practices which probably, you know, I have done, tried, tested, failed multiple times. So uh, I, I have finally realized that there are certain best practices that every individual who is planning to get into business or uh, even, even if they are working on uh, some kind of a leadership profile, they should have these uh, practices well done, well practiced, and uh, well tested with their set of audiences. So uh, every, every practice that I've mentioned here from personal branding to customer advocacy to ethics to transparency, it's all very generic keywords, but I'm going to uh, put some of my real stories, how, how it all worked with me for my businesses. So before I get with that, this is me, Rajendra Zore, not Raj Zo. <laughs> you all can call me Raj. And uh, you can connect me on social media. I'm almost everywhere. Haven't tried Tinder yet, but <laughs> other than that, I'm, I'm almost everywhere. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my professional journey. And uh, this morning I tweeted about like how I started from McDonald's in back in 2007 when I dropped out of my college, I'm still an undergrad, so I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm already intimidated with such a big classrooms. Big respect to professors. So uh, I dropped out and I could manage to get first job in McDonald's. They were the only ones who got impressed with the fact that I'm dropped out. They gave me the job, thanks. I enjoyed myself, they were free employee meal, and I always used to wait for that after cleaning some toilets. But that is how pretty much I started and had all sorts of odd jobs until I cracked uh, myself into background screening and I was doing some profile checks and due diligence and whatnot. I don't know why that came into my, uh, you know, my, my uh, professional journey, but it, it has taught me a lot because I was dealing with clients, I was dealing with a lot of uh, due diligence and profile checks and stuff like that. So it has given me a different level of confidence and understanding with the industry. Moving on, I, uh, after, after leaving that career, I was almost two years unemployed, and I decided to kind of leave uh, my city. I'm, I'm from India, so I stay in Mumbai, and I decided to move that and move uh, out to a new city, Ahmedabad. I find a job there, but got kicked out after five months because of the incompetency. <laughs> yeah, so ironically, my profile was business head, my boss thought, I have no clue what I'm doing, and he kicked me out, saying that you're incompetent, you should go back, you know? I was like, okay, <laughs> thank you for your feedback, but I'm, I might going to stick around in this city for a while. And after he kicked me out and uh, staying on street for a couple of nights, I figured out that it's about time, I should put my foot down and probably just start something of my own. That is when it, it struck me that how bad my career path was. I haven't worked any time in any IT industry. It was all non-IT jobs. I tried myself, but you know, back in my country, if you're undergraduate, you straight away get unqualified, like, you know. And I'm still a dropout, and I'm running, uh, I've, I've built multiple startups, and I'm currently running RunCloud, which is a multi-million dollar company. 
and our product has been used in 80 plus country. So I want to thank my boss who said I was incompetent as a business developer. <laughs> I started questioning myself hard until I become CMO of RunCloud uh, and trying to figure out uh, with my own business strategy how I can make it big. So uh, you guys remember the title, right? You can go on my Twitter also, a lot of clickbaity stuff had been uh, added over there. But the point is, all this is real. I was homeless in the new city. I, I have uh, tried a lot of, lot of things, you know, whenever you, you are hopeless, helpless, all you do is Google, you know? I have done my share of Google and I realized that it's not working for me. So let me just try and fail myself and learn and probably come the day when I, I'll be able to share this thing. So probably this is kind of a first hand that I'm sharing, okay? Uh, so this is pretty much just a show of kind of an infographic or something, but it worked on social media. I got a better likes and all that. <laughs> Okay, so as I said that these things, anyone remember this movie, Shawshank Redemption? Yeah, loved it? Yeah. Best one, best one. Especially when you're low in life, such movies works for you, okay? <laughs> and for some goddamn reason, you get so interested in every dialogues, like, okay, dude, this is related to my life. Like, suddenly everything is related to your life. <laughs> So this thought has, you know, it, it helped me because all this while when, when probably one night when I was just homeless and sitting in that new city wondering what I'm going to do next, there was this hope that everything is going to work out fine, you know. And suddenly one of my friends suggested me this movie and I was like, oh dude, this movie is like a retargeting. They just retargeted me and giving this good dialogue, you know, on hope. So this, <laughs> this is the code that I go by, okay? Now moving on, uh, this doesn't move on fast. I just clicked it, but, dude, you have to move on, yeah. So coming down to business, let's start with personal branding. How many of you understand what personal branding is? Are you guys on Twitter? Yeah? And what is your first move with personal branding? Is it doing social media right or just starting a blog? Okay, doing social media right. Just starting a blog because I want to get into my personal branding stuff. And I know a little bit of English and thanks to Grammarly. <laughs> oh, Grammarly saves me all the time. I'm like went, gone and won't. It just correct me, dude, you're wrong. Yeah? <laughs> All right, so personal branding. So I'm not going to give all listicles and all that. Let me tell you a story now. I have a lot of stories, by the way. <laughs> Struggles give you a lot of stories, you know. So I started my first company in 2012. Uh, the first big lesson I learned in the business industry is uh, partners. They can screw you up anytime. Happened to me. I learned my lesson. I moved on. And in 2015, I decided to start exploring this new buzzword called solopreneurship. Did I pronounce that right? I practiced it, okay? <laughs> so, so solopreneurship, it was like Lone Ranger. Like, what if there's no one to help me out? Will I be able to do my business myself? Right? So that kind of a thought came in my mind. I started listing down every possible skill set that I, that I learned in my first business and everything. All the good and bad experiences, all the technical skills, everything. And I started my next venture, which was host my blog. When I started host my blog, thanks to my fiance, we, she helped me with the nomenclature. I was totally confused. I was like, I want to start something, but what something, you know, that has to be channelized. So that started with, the first step was the personal branding. You know the importance of personal branding? I'm not sure Steve Jobs must have said this thing, but you know, we, we all are driven by the Apple products. And there are so many other products we are emotionally connected with. It's all branding, you know. Some of the people I meet online, they're like super cool, like the next Avengers. I meet them offline and they're so 
awkward. They're like, dude, I thought you're a back man. <laughs> yeah? So, branding is really important. You as a solopreneur, you as an individual business person, you cannot sell your brand. Just, just accept that fact. But you can sell yourself. Not in whatever the way, in a good way. <laughs> you know, the name should be sold out. Right? So, for me, personal branding is when you create yourself, all right? And then you connect your brand, you give your brand a voice, right? You cannot go the other way around unless you have VCs coming right from Silicon Valley, okay? Until then, you have to build your own self and build your own credibility, right? So many of you must have searched my profile that who the hell is he? Let's go for a chat or go, you know, let's go for his talk. If he bugs us, we will walk out in next five minutes. So it's all about branding. It's all about how you put yourself out. But how do you do that? I mean, Google gives you zillions of uh, options to do uh, branding. And when I started, the first thing was start your blog. I'm like, dude, I can't write. And what do I write, you know? And at that point of time, the Grammarly was not that famous. It was later I realized they have free plan and I started using it. <laughs> but that was not a choice when I started. So back in 2015, I met this person, okay? Person with 1,000 followers on Twitter. And she was just 1,000 followers on Twitter. But all, the, all, all, all that Starbucks meeting duration, she was acting like a celeb. I paid for her coffee, okay? And I'm like, 1,000 followers, why that's a big deal, you know? She's not interested in what I'm trying to convey to her that, okay, this is the social media project, would you be interested in taking? And she is selling me the thousand follower thing. I, I don't understand. And I'm like, what is this? Is it some kind of a new trend or what it is? May 2015, I decided to take Twitter seriously. I started with around 69, 70 followers at that point of time. I had no clue how this thing works. But here's what I did. So this is the first step of your personal branding. Okay, please don't force yourself to write a blogs. Okay, there are, there are so many blogs already. Start creating something that brings your voice out. Like, I can't write, I don't want to pretend writing even. You know, I don't want to start a blog immediately. All right, but I, I definitely want to make sure that how I'm contributing, that people are noticing me, they want to listen to me, they want to follow me, right? So this is what I've done. I've decided to take Twitter seriously. So Twitter, Facebook, Tinder was not on my list, right? First, yeah. <laughs> So Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram, I still don't do that right. But Twitter and Facebook were serious. And, but at that point of time in 2015, I thought Twitter is good. Celebrities are there. Everyone is talking there. Let me focus that point. So that thing that says that pick one social media outlet, it is really important. Don't try to be everywhere creating your magic. You know, it's not going to happen if you're just getting started. Or you're an offline celebrity already and people are looking for you everywhere. So if you are an individual, pick one channel where you think your community is. For me, in 2015, it was Twitter. I started with 69 to 70 followers and the first strategy was the bio. Okay? Not some, I don't want to study like that sort of a bio. You have to be clean with what you do, what you're going to deliver, what your profile is all about. Some kind of an info that people will find that you're, you're not a spammer or you're not a, uh, just, a, just a personality or disappear sometime or try to DM the first thing, hey babes, how are you, kind of a stuff. You have to be real, realistic, you know. So that is how uh, the first step started. I started building my social profiles well, good picture. I don't look good, but the pictures look good, okay. So I started with that and then I, I decided to stick to Twitter until I figure that damn thing out, okay? And then I was like, tweeting is not helping. RT, yeah, it is helping a little bit, but tweeting just random things not helping, like Monday motivation, Wednesday wisdom is not doing well. So what I did, I decided to myself to pick a niche. Now, some people call it niche, I call it niche. Let's stick to niche. I picked a niche. And I was like, what am I good at? Nothing, okay? But what I'm interested in, I'm interested in 
digital marketing. I'm interested in WordPress because I've already figured that out in my first business. And some of the startup things, whatever, just, just go with the flow. So for me, it was important to pick some kind of a keywords that I am interested in. I done that first. The next thing I did was Twitter chat. It still works. If you guys really want to experiment, just pick a couple of Twitter chats. There are, there are some great Twitter chats that happens across SEO and digital marketing and you know, other, other interesting topics. You know, just pick a couple of them, two, three max, and just be a part of it. Just by doing and being a part of Twitter chat, I managed to get more than 1,000 followers in three weeks. So whatever that celebrity who uh, got the free Starbucks coffee from me, I just outrank her in just three weeks. So what was it all about? It was all about, you know, being in the community, learning from the community, and then giving back to the community. For example, when I started Twitter chat with, let's say, SCM Rush, hashtag SCM Rush, I had no clue how this thing is going. I, I, I started being the silent member of the uh, Twitter chat. I started learning. And then from second or third chat, I started contributing back. The best part was the questions were revealed way before the Twitter chat. So I used to just do Google. You know, Google is uh, everywhere the first rescue point. So I used to do Google. I used to keep all my answers ready. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm ready to rock here. And my answers used to get RTs and likes and whatnot. And I'm like followers and followers and followers. They thought that I'm an expert. I'm like, OK, that's working for me. You know? <laughs> but the point is, I don't want that. I mean, I don't want the fake followers. I want to learn. I want to make sure that by the time they realize this guy was faking, I should be real. You know? So that learning part is on you. But how to get started, it's this. Facebook group, until 2017, I thought Facebook is like my uncle or my aunt or my parents and everyone that I'm running away from other on Facebook. Until I figure out there are some amazing Facebook groups again focused on my interest. So I started with one group, then Facebook started running the magic of suggesting me the groups that are relevant to my uh, interest. I started adding myself to almost every, dude, you have to still be there. It's like, get done already. So all right, so I need to keep clicking this button so it doesn't sleep. OK, so Facebook group, I, sta I, I added myself in one of these WordPress group. Facebook started suggesting me some relevant groups. And I started adding myself to that as well. Now, apparently, I, when I joined WordPress, I realized that I have been doing WordPress since 2012. And there is so much I don't know. Then I, again, get back to my old strategy of being the silent member learning from the other members, learning from the queries that are coming in the group, and then giving back to the community. This practice helped me to not just become one of the prominent members of uh, the WordPress groups. And of course, being an Asian or being an Indian, you will first be seen as a spammer. I made my way out. I, I got blocked multiple times. I requested admin. I was not even um, spamming. It was genuine question, but you're Asian, you're a spammer. So that's still there, OK? But uh, I made my way out, and not just uh, I become one of the uh, contributor or a good member and not a spammer, I also got promoted as the moderator and admin. And in today's time, I am the admin to multiple WordPress groups, which are um, which are the world's uh, top WordPress groups on Facebook. I'm one of the admins, and we are running the community of over 100,000 members worldwide. So that was one of the milestones, and I started learning yeah, how to interact with people. Because even if it's one community, every individual is different. Their problems are different. Even if it's just WordPress side, the problems are totally different. And giving back has helped me a lot. So here how I started leveraging. So I am now a superstar on Twitter. I'll show you why I said superstar. I got an award also. I don't look like an award winner, but I got an award. And uh, I started leveraging. The next step is once 
you build the website. The next step is, of course, how you can promote it and leverage it, you know, you, you get a business out of it. My point of business was being better in this, being better in giving back to the community. And that is what I started doing. So now, if you check my Twitter, it's 4,000 plus followers, okay? Just consider me as a celeb already. And then, the second thing I started doing is, I started showing some good interest in other people's story. We all have stories. If I'll ask you, each one of you, how you started with WordPress, you'll have amazing story to share. Like, I, I don't have an amazing story, but the fullest story is I started with a local environment on VAM, and one of this great guy, he gave me his website. My company didn't even have a name at that point of time, but he trusted me for, I don't know why, he trusted me. He gave me uh, his website to build. I, I didn't have any clue, like, okay, this is a theme forest? Wow, the website is already built. What am I supposed to do in that? Should I call it a widget or a widget? You know, so I was totally confused. Like, what is plug-in? What to plug in and from where? I was totally clueless and that cluelessness led me to build that website again and again and again for 50 times, you know? But I, I figured my way out, I learned uh, how the WordPress works, what is plugin, what is themes, and everything is free, wow. And you still learn out of it. So, I started showing some equal interest in other stories, understanding how they started. Some plugin authors, they are like, I mean, we have to accept the fact, if a person is too intelligent, he cannot market himself, okay? I'm not intelligent, I'm marketing, marketing myself, you know? So, at that point of time, I came across so many plugins. And these plugins were brilliant, but these guys were not reaching out to the community. And I had the power of groups and more than 100,000 global users of WordPress. I was like, okay, let's, let's start helping them. Understanding their story, understanding what kind of a solution they're providing, I started suggesting and recommending them, not promoting or endorsing them. There was no money involved any point of time. But uh, any, anyone using Astra, Blog Vault, any, anyone using Blog Walls and Astra and all that stuff? Okay, these are a couple of plugins that I, I heavily recommended to people after all the tests that I do. So it is really important when you're in a community, don't think that the other person is going to take all your knowledge or going to use you. Just be free, share your knowledge, and the execution is the key. Even if you share your entire strategy, don't expect that person to run the show exactly the way you might. Okay, so you're the, you're the champion with your own strategy. So don't, don't be like limited, be helpful, contribute back, join, join the communities, join, join the Twitter chat, and in no time, you will realize that there are so many people interested in what you're doing, you know? And that is going to give, you, give back a leverage to your brand, whichever brand you're running. Oh, really? <laughs> so, how many of you already acknowledge when I say that humanize your brand on social media? Right? Right? We are moving to robots, but we still want the humanized approach. You know? So, how did I, I leverage my personal branding or whatever I have done, and how did I start making business? So when I started host my blog back in October 2015, until December 2015, I had two clients. Those two clients, I gave my service free, like free domain, free hosting. Those were my two clients. For next eight months, I had no business in host my blog. I was doing every possible thing, uh, but I was doing it wrong. I forgot all the things that I have done right with my personal branding and doing wrong with my brand. The first wrong thing I was doing is, I was not leveraging my social status to promote my brand, to talk my knowledge out. The second thing wrong I was doing is, I was just blindly posting things on Twitter. I was not engaging with them. So on 10th of August, 2016, after almost like eight to 10 months of hibernation mode of my business, I cracked the code for my business with this one tweet. This one tweet has created a great conversation online on my Twitter account. And from there onward, the bloggers started noticing that there is something called host my blog. 
the first impression was they loved the name because it was too personal, like host my blog. It was too personal for them. So that, that's again a magic of branding because initially I thought I'll make it let's blog. My fiance said, you're stupid, let's be host my blog. So, you know, women, they always win. Of course, they're intelligent and thanks to her, this brand is doing amazingly well and currently I'm managing more than 500 WordPress sites under this brand. So this is one of the most preferred when it comes to, you know, the bloggers trusting with their decades old blog, they go to Raj. Again, they go to Raj, they still go to Raj. They, they don't go to host my blog, okay? So if you go on my Facebook page, if you'll read everything, it's all start with Raj. So that's the magic of personal branding. That's the magic of bringing your personal branding, leveraging that and humanizing your brand, which is, in my case, it was host my blog at that point. Honestly, I don't know what's next in my slide. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, this is what I was talking about. So I was doing my thing. I don't know, I was doing it right, I was doing it wrong, but I was just doing my thing, like the Twitter thing, Twitter chat. I, I used to participate in some of the chats which were four o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning. I'm not, I'm not a morning person, but I don't know, I was obsessed with the follower things and real followers, they're talking. Every morning I used to wake up with RTs and likes and all that. I don't know, I was in that zone. So I was doing my thing, leveraging that, humanizing my brand and all that traction which was coming. Some of the agencies, they were watching how this guy is doing things, right? You know, And they awarded me as one of the power digital users of India in 2016. They didn't really give me that trophy yet. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right, so this is from uh, my LinkedIn profile. Just a testimonial so that whatever I'm babbling for past, I don't know how many minutes, there's a support to that. It's true, okay? So <laughs> the Mark Parkinson is one of my clients and the other guy, Satish, is uh, my classmate from college, the same college I dropped out. He graduated, he is master's now. I still don't have degree. But they acknowledge whatever I do. So they left their recommendation, yeah. So I'm real. Now comes customer advocacy. Do you guys know what is customer advocacy is? Yeah, not the lawyers who are advocates. But in our business, we need advocates. Again, not the legal advocates, we need the customer advocates. How do you build that customer advocacy? You know, go Google, you'll find hundreds. I think these things works. When I struggled hard, my brand went on the hibernation mode for 10 months. The only thing worked at that point of time was humanizing it. Why be inhuman when the user is there on your platform? Yeah, why disappear and be a robot? So I focused on two things. I, I was, I, and, and this, is, this is the practices. It is not just with my WordPress business. It is also followed with my SaaS business, which is a multi-million dollar company today, right? So these are the things, it's not just limit, limited to WordPress business. It's, it's, it's like the practices you have to follow, probably it will help you in your personal life too. So I started focusing on the customer-centric approach. I wanted to make sure that once they are on board, I want to make sure I'm delivering the best. You might feel at one point that I'm not earning so much out of it. Why should I do it? You know, but you never know by doing that and not earning out of it, you might earn a lifelong loyalist customer and they will go out and they will become your brand advocates. They will do the word of mouth and word of mouth is still powerful and better than running a couple of ads on Facebook and wasting your money on it and have all kind of uh, spam likes. So I was focused on customer need and the customer support. I don't think you need anything else. Once the customer is in, stop. I mean, okay, we have the swags and everything is okay. But you're not giving the good support. You're not, you don't even have the good services, what they require. You're just sending them the good swags and greeting cards and everything. They won't like you, all right? So you have to first focus on your core business and your services, what you're offering. When I started, I started at $18 per year service, which included domain name, hosting, and site migration. 
Site migration from bloggers and wordpress.com is okay. Site migration from Wix. You know, feel some pity for me. Wix. And I did that. I was up all night. I was doing that. You know, and what am I getting out of it? No profit at all. $18 per year. Can you imagine? Then that boss who kicked me, he was right. I don't know how to do business. But what am I really doing? I was doing... A, a job where I build my personal brand, I build my name authority, and then I'll focus on the earning part. Right now, I need voice. Voice that can go say that this Raj guy is good. I cannot hire 10 marketing managers, but what I can do is, I can give best service to my initial clients, my first clients, they will go and advocate my brand. And that is what has happened. So, as a best example, Back in uh, August 2016, I showed you the tweet. After that particular tweet, 10th August tweet, everything started working out really well. And by the end of that year, I had more than 100 signups. And 100 bloggers on your platform, it's a big thing. People hire them as the influencer marketing, and these guys have been marketing me for free. Why? Because of the customer-centric approach. Yeah. They turned themselves, because they're happy, they turned themselves as a brand advocate. They started doing the word of mouth and they started bringing their own friends in, you know. So I, I picked up a good niche. It's like, you know, you, you touch one person and everything gets affected. That sort of a thing. So I, I started getting good uh, recommendation. People started joining us. And by December, I was just doing hosting, domain and site migration. January 2017, as a result of customer advocacy, I got an email from one of the top influencers in India, the bloggers. She said that, Raj, I know how to do the WordPress and everything, but I keep busy. Why don't you maintain my blog? And I was like, what is maintaining the blog means? I was not aware that there is maintenance service or that particular segment exists, you know, because I was relatively new. So I started... Uh, Researching about it, like she said, maintain my blog. How do I maintain my, maintain her blog? You know. Then I realized, okay, you have to take care of the updates and other things. You know what I used to do? I used to individually go to the sites and do the updates. Ignorance. I don't know. No right knowledge. You know. So again, went back to my first learning uh, way, which worked for me in the personal branding by joining the groups and all that. What did I do? I joined the relevant groups. And I came across main WPA. And I came across the people who are managing hundreds of WordPress sites. And how are they managing it? They have the centralized system. So the first thing I learned from my customer was maintenance business. The second thing I learned that there are centralized systems. See, we are in the WordPress sphere, but there is so much we don't know about. Even if the plugin that we are using, there are so many settings we just ignore. And later, through such sessions, we realize that, oh my God, that's a, that setting was so useful. You know? So it is, it is more like, if you know, you know everything, you're wrong. There is still a lot to know. So I came across this centralized management system. I started uh, diving more and more into the WordPress maintenance business. Okay? So that clickbaity title, $18 per year, it still exists, but I focused on my multiple streams of revenue. All right? So multiple streams of, I am still not disappointing my existing customers since 2015 and 2016. They are still getting the service at $18 per year, but I have figured my way out on multiple streams of revenue. And my WordPress maintenance business is giving me thousands of dollars per year. And Currently, I'm managing, as I said, more than 500 uh, WordPress sites. And my clientele includes the top bloggers and uh, the celebrities, from news anchor to uh, the person who is working with our prime minister and stuff like that. So everyone started trusting me. Now, those people, they wouldn't go and trust host my blog. They will trust the person who is recommending me, and then they will go check my profile first, and then they will go on my branding. That is how it all works. And that is how I got many of these big profile clients. They were like, okay, you got recommended by so and so person we know, and we went on your profile, and we liked your brand. It was never like, okay, she recommended, we went to your website and everything, and we like, no, we want to know the person behind it because we are giving you our website backend access. 
There's a lot of secrets in it. That is how I built my WordPress business. And that is what that thousands of dollars in revenue means. You know, that is how uh, it built. But again, there was one sector, section which I was uh, meaning to explore. This is just a testimonial to impress you guys. So these are the testimonials my customers leave on my Facebook page. Uh, it's been how many years? Four years and still 100% customer satisfaction ratio. There is one incident I want to share with you guys, how customer advocacy has helped me in 2017. One of the client or one of the blogger, she was really pissed off, I don't know why. Maybe she was not understanding uh, some technicalities which we were trying to make her understand and she was just blaming the brand and that's okay, you know. We have to face one of such client to learn. Now she went on Twitter and started negatively influencing others. Now. Where was I and what I was doing? From my host, my blog profile, I tried to calm her down. I tried to suggest her ways out. She was not ready. She made up her mind that, dude, you're screwed now. Who helped me? Who helped me? So it was my customers who went, tweeted back and said that we are good. This is what it is. And that is how, without me coming there and talking to them, there were tens and hundreds of my own users. They went on Twitter and her tweets were completely disappeared from there. So that is how, and that is the power of customer advocacy. So let me run, the game is over, stop. <laughs> Ethics and transparency, we all are ethical, right? Ethical people, raise your hand. I just wanted everyone to raise their hand. So. With ethics and transparency, what I mean is just keep it simple, okay, don't complicate things, don't lie to your clients, they know everything, they have done their research and they came to you, just be honest to them and make sure if you are an individual person who is running the show, make sure you are not providing the services that can lock them out if you get hit by the bus, okay. So we all are humans, we all are going to die or something or the other is going to happen to us, please make sure the services are not locking them out. That is how I stop my domain services and currently my main stream of revenue is the site maintenance and the uh, cloud hosting. All right. So these are the tools that I use and uh, yeah, any questions because the game is over. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Should I just take, okay, questions, yeah. Would you guys be having a questions or what? I was too clear. <laughs> no, but throw some questions at me. Let me embarrass myself. Oh, that gentleman. Just know that Mr. Bean, okay? Be kind. Um, how did you go? So you're talking about you first establishing your own personal brand and then tying it into pushing and supporting a business brand. How did you go about transitioning from that? Because I find it a bit icky and awkward, sort of putting, to, I, I, I've built myself up, but tying myself with my business, I feel a bit awkward um, making that connection and making my business more personal. Okay, so you mean to say that how you can um, leverage your personal branding and bring that into your business, right? Yes, without yeah, feeling okay. weird about it. Okay. So what I did was I built that authority. That is the reason the first step is to pick your niche. You have to build your authority in that. If you're good at hosting, just talk about hosting. If you're good at designing, talk about designing and help the people and give back to the community, right? Now, when people come across, like for example, host my blog, they want to go back and check who is the person behind it. So if you go on host my blog Twitter account, I still make sure that the general tweets are by at the rate Rajendra Zore. So these people want to go back and check, okay, this man is legit, he has 4,000 plus followers and he kind of helped people like that. So by leveraging that, what I mean to say is do a couple of personal posts and RT it using your brand, okay? Secondly, all the niche that you're following through your brand because you know the follow and follow procedure that we do on social media, right? Try to help them out. Like what I used to do is I used to help some of the bloggers from my official profile that is host my blog and also with my own profile i was the the thing is that you have to keep showing yourself you know through your brand and through yourself as well 
and then the traffic will jump you know so what i did was simple initially i was just posting 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 but eventually i realized i have to engage and talk to my audience and that is how that one post has worked for me so if you are creating such an uh, uh, engaging questioning kind of a post just rt that with your personal thing because your personal branding is already strong yeah any more questions Uh, thank you, Raj. I, without any disrespect, I really relate to you as Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, I feel that you've had a personal journey and during that uh, you've awoken to understanding how to connect with people, how to share your information and your technology and giving back to the community as a prime mover to your success. Uh, I'm curious where you're going next. I am already on my next move with RunCloud. It's a SaaS business. We are the server management panel. And with that giving back to the community attitude, what I figured out is back in 2003 when WordPress came into picture, it was easy for everyone to just care up and build their websites. Why? Because there was some kind of a CMS there. The same culture I'm trying to bring into the cloud servers. Because as the CMS is getting more and more uh, feature-oriented uh, and feature stuff, we need more performance. And what we are stuck with is we have a WordPress and we have the shared hosting. Why are we not looking into the cloud hosting part? Because we are not the system admin. So with RunCloud, we have built the server management panel, which is now making a complete unmanaged server a complete no-brainer. So we have created kind of a CMS for your cloud service now. So the next move, so when I say that multi-million dollar, host my blog is not a multi-million dollar company. When I refer to the multi-million dollar company, then it's a run cloud and you know we, we get to, we have also competed at Silicon Valley and stuff like that. So I think that's a next to the next move. So I'm already there. Uh, but host my blog, you can still go on my Twitter, you can talk to all my customers, it's still on 100% customer satisfaction ratio. So I don't, I don't leave my roots, that is where I started. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, hi, Raj. I mean, hi. since I'm in the near vicinity of the microphone, I thought I'd ask. <laughs> uh, you, you already pointed out the social media platforms that work for you. I mean, primarily Twitter, yes? Then. Now Facebook works for me. Well, that's what I was going to ask, yeah. So at the moment, you say Facebook works really well for you. Any other platforms? What about LinkedIn? Uh, Tinder never worked for me. <laughs> Uh, Facebook is working for me, definitely. For the bloggers, Pinterest is working. But how Facebook is working for me, I'll tell you. I joined the community. So when I go on Facebook, uh, if you go on my Facebook, you'll realize there are certain public posts which are meant to probably uh, somewhere sharing my, my journey, what am I doing and stuff like that. Like, you know, he asked like, what's next? So a lot of people who follow me, they want to know what's next. And all that what next is the public post that I do. But most of my time I spend on the various groups, uh, replying to various questions and helping them out with the suggestions and recommendation, I still do it. So even if tomorrow, with your blessings, if I become a billionaire, I will still do that. Because it gave me a reason, you know, because I was homeless and then I started doing this. So probably until I'm alive, I'll, I'll keep giving back to the community, right? So uh, Facebook is a great stuff. Go join the relevant groups. Come, I will accept your request, don't worry. But join the groups and learn from it, you know. So that is where the branding starts. Uh, I'll tell you, there are the uh, plugins, they just came in and uh, they earn more than $100,000 without marketing just by being within the community. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. More questions? This side is all silent. It's like we don't understand what he's talking. <laughs> This side is super powerful. Did I confuse you guys? <laughs> then ask questions. Or the game is over. Or the last bit I can do. No? We are, it is pretty much. Uh, okay, no problem. Break no time. problem. I think I'll do that later. But uh, the last bit that I wanted to do is just give a quick live demo on spinning the servers like Walter, Vulture, I don't know what you call that, but Vulture. 
and uh, how you can just set that unmanaged cloud uh, in just few clicks. But not a problem, I'll do the live webinar if you guys remember me and follow me. But uh, for now, thank you so much for tolerating me. <laughs>